Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and then in today's tutorial, we learn about natural language processing in Julia. So, specifically, we're doing about test analysis. So, what is natural language processing? It's simply put, it's a format of or it's a form of artificial intelligence, right? Form, form of AI. Most people don't see it as AI, but it's an AI form that is, that tries to understand or process everyday languages, right? So, how human beings communicate to one another is through languages true languages so we are trying to understand how or process our everyday language using machines or using computers so for example there are several use cases it is used for test and sentiment analysis it is used for test analysis it is used for categorization for several things so for example let's look at this you have this normal website <coughs> as google so if i come to this place right search by voice and i go for search for natural language processing Search for natural language processing. So that is automatically search for this word natural language processing without I typing anything. So now let's try a different one. Julia language. Perfect. So it's automatically searching for Julia language. So this is using what natural. Here is some information about Julia. Mm -hmm. So it's telling me, giving me even details. Right? This is using an API, an NLP API as well as machine learning or deep learning. Okay, so let's see how to do that in Julia. So that is the concept about NLP, the concept about test analysis. So whatever word I spoke, it took the word, then convert, converted the word into test, analyzed the word, and then gave me the result. So first of all, in, so far, since Julia is quite a young programming language, most of the packages are still in development. So we'll be using these available ones. And an advantage of Julia is that if the package is not yet available in Julia, you can call it using PyCall, ArrowCall, or JCall. That is the advantage of Julia. So we're using NLTK, which is a fully developed natural language processing toolkit. So let's start. First of all, you have to add this package if you don't have it. So pkg.add test analysis. Then you have to you can clone this package, right? Because this is not fully recognized. So pkg.clone where it tokenizes. Okay, so there are several packages. So first of all, let's start about how to read a file. So using test analysis, and then the hierarchy is that it starts with file, right? For the test analysis, then string and tokens and, and graphs. So we'll be learning about all of these things in the in, the, in this tutorial. So I have this test here, my string. So my string is the best error message is the one that never shows up as you're using. Then you learn more from failure than from success, right? These are several ones that we can have. So now let's see the basic way of reading a test. So to read a test or a string, it just go with document. So document, then you pass in your string. So my string, that is the basic way of doing it. So let's call it our SD1, right? Our SD1. It's going to read it basically. So test analysis, and the type of it is what test analysis, the string document. That is the basic way of reading, not only a string, but also reading files. That is the basic way. But the best way of reading it, because Julia is more of, a functional program language and so it's more type using the type system so we should you can use in this way for the best way it's going to be like what sd let's call it sd2 then the best way is going to be since it's a string i'm going to go with string and document then i'm going to pass in my string right that is the best way to read it it's perfect so the either this way or this way but this way is going to de determine itself whether it's a string and then give us the type so again if you have in a file you can also read it from it so i have a file you can read it by the file part or you can use it in a basic format so let's call it f file doc right that's going to be what the basic way is going to be document then our file so the name of our file was sample file.txt right it's going to read it perfectly for us it's going to automatically detect the kind of file the kind of thing supplied here and then give us the type right so but the best way to read it we call it fd it's going to be what file document then we're going to supply our file dot tst we're going to read it perfectly so this is the best way of reading it okay so apart from that you can also read it using a token document and then engram document right you can also use this one also to read if you have any tokens you want to read all the tokens or if you have an engram and you want to read all the engrams so now let's move on to some of the things we can also do now how do you work with our test that we had so we had our test the test was sd 
one, which was the test that we had, or SD two, which was the test that we had, right? You want to work with this SD, which is for the string document. So the best way of working with it is to go with you can just process with test, and then it's going to work perfectly for us. So now you see that it is printing perfectly whatever test that was there. If I had done it like this, mm. although we have read it right, but if I have done it like this, print line sd2 is going to give me the type of the file. But for me to read it, I have to go with test, then sd2, then it's going to read it perfectly for me, right? That is nice. So let's see what language is it. So it's quite easy. So there are several ways you can get information from it or get metadata from it. Some of these ways include language. So if you want to know the language of the file that was applied, which is SD2, it's going to tell me that it is what? English, right? So there are several things you can also do. You can, you can get the name of the file, the type of the file, all of these things will name. I'm not sure whether it's going to work. SD2. Perfect. On name document, you can also do it for author to know the author of the document. So S2, unknown author, right? So that is some of the information you can get from this. Then I have done. Now let's see again. That is if you are using a file or even a, a string, it's going to work perfectly. So for example, if I had another string, let's try that up for a string. The one that we had so it's going to be name. And then we had it as FD, right? For our file document. Sample test, right? That's one way of doing it. Okay. Now let's see. Now let's see how to tokenize with test analysis. So there are several ways of tokenization. So what does tokenization mean? So tokenization means you are splitting the words right into tokens or into words so tokenization simply means you are trying to build tokens from it the purpose of tokenization is to help us to do a lot of analysis to help us to do vectorization to do a lot of things to build features and then there are several ways of doing several advantages of tokenization because every word must must first of all get the language that the word is inside then break that phrase that language you are speaking into what words like the tokens then you can be able to do your analysis by context or by content perfect so we had our test this is our test so how do we tokenize these things so there are three forms of tokenization you have word tokens and then sentence tokens so to do that we can just do it with this you can just use the normal test analysis to do that right so we have tokens because this is already a test file a string file I can just go with sd1 and then it's going to tokenize it perfectly for us right without processing it Perfect. So it has tokenized it for us, give us all these words. That is one way of tokenizing it. So in case if it was a file, a different file format, right? It's going to go with your tokens. Then it's still going to work in that same format, right? FD. Without processing it, it's going to work perfectly for us. So these are some of the ways of tokenizing from a file document or from a string document. Now let's see how to tokenize not only just word tokens, but to do sentence tokens. So how do you do say sentence tokens? We can use this package. So using token word tokenizer, right? Word tokenizer comes with two packages. It gives us the capacity to do word tokens or to do sentence tokens. So let's see how to do that. So first of all, this is our test that we had, right? If I go with, I have to first of all process this, our test, which was this, right? And then we want to tokenize it perfectly. To build tokens from it let's use something simple that is going to be easy so i'm going to call it as this so my test is going to be what is a string tokenizer string document so hello world this is julia or oh, this is nlp in julia right this is nlp in julia Perfect. So this I have this test where so if I want to tokenize this thing, I can just first of all I can just go straight away and then process it into a test before tokenizing it, right? Because if I do it like this tokenizer and I go with my test, it's not it's going to give me an error because it's not seeing it. So the best way of doing it is to first of all process it as a test. It says giving us an error. Okay, even if it was this, process it like this way. Perfect. See now it's working perfectly. Okay, so that is one way of doing it. So we must first convert this 
into a string and then do it right that is the purpose of this so the same thing so we have we had our first one was this which was this and then i want to do it in a best way so i have to do a token nice right and then this is going to give us a web token then i have to process it as test then sd one right perfect so it's giving us all the tokens perfectly the best error message is the one that never shows up <laughs> okay now let's move on to how to do sentence tokenization so to do sentence tokenization it's quite simple so we have some sentence here so first solve the problem then write the code fix this fix the course blah 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 this is a sentence we have right so let's see how to do sentence tokenization using this format so i've already put these words inside the file i'm going to read it so that we can work with it perfectly right so let's see what our test was so sent files the same thing that was there perfect right first solve the problem then write the code fix the course not the same test okay Simplicity is the soul of efficiency. So now let's see how to do sentence tokenization. So to do that, just going to go with something like for. Oh, you can just go with split sentence. Sentences, right? Then you're going to pass in our test, then our sent files. So we see that it has split all of them into sentence. So let's do it in a, in a simple and efficient way. So it's going to be for sentence. In split sentences let me copy this one to save time perfect right then I'm going to go with print line sentence so this is going to build all the sentence tokens for us from this thing and perfect so now this is a sentence token for each and every of them so first solve the problem then write the code Fix the course on the same thing. Simplicity, simplicity is the soul of efficiency. So that's one way of building sentence tokens or sentence tokenization with web tokenizer in Julia. Now let's see another best way of building breaking the sentences into tokens. So I have already created a file here. So perfect. So if you do it like this, so we are the, the, the process is like this. So they're just like the previous one, but we are presenting everywhere you are tokenizing every word and then we are passing it into this format right that is one of the ways of doing it so this has given us an excellent tokenization of every sentence so we have first comma solve the problem so it's giving us tokens of the sentence using the space <laughs> and the punctuation is really quite interesting so thank you for watching if you have any questions or contribution can just put inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit and please don't forget to subscribe, stay blessed.